Helmut Joseph Michael Cole, the 3rd of April 1930, the 16th of June 2017, was a German statesman and politician of the Christian Democratic Union who served as Chancellor of Germany from 1982 to 1998, and as Chairman of the CDU from 1973 to 1998. Kohl's 16-year tenure is the longest of any German Chancellor since Otto von Bismarck, and oversaw the end of the Cold War, the German reunification and the creation of the European Union. Born in 1930 in Ludwigshafen to a Roman Catholic family, Kohl joined the Christian Democratic Union in 1946 at the age of 16. He earned a PhD in history at Heidelberg University in 1958, and worked as a business executive before becoming a full-time politician. He was elected as the youngest member of the Parliament of Rhineland Palatinate in 1959 and from 1969 to 1976 was Minister President of the Rhineland Palatinate State. Viewed during the 1960s and the early 1970s as a progressive within the CDU, he was elected national chairman of the party in 1973. After he had become party leader, Cole was increasingly seen as a more conservative figure. In the 1976 and 1980 federal elections his party performed well, but the social liberal government of social democrat Helmut Schmidt, was able to remain in power. After Schmidt had lost the support of the liberal FDP in 1982, Kohl was elected chancellor through a constructive vote of no confidence, forming a coalition government with the FDP. Kohl chaired the Group of Seven in 1985 and 1992. As chancellor, Kohl was committed to European integration and especially to the Franco-German relationship, he was also a steadfast ally of the United States and supported Reagan's more aggressive policies in order to weaken the Soviet Union. Following the revolutions of 1989 his government acted decisively, culminating in the German reunification in 1990. Kohl and French President François Mitterrand were the architects of the Maastricht Treaty which established the European Union, and the euro currency. Kohl was also a central figure in the Eastern enlargement of the European Union, and his government led the effort to push for international recognition of Croatia, Slovenia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina when the states declared independence. He played an instrumental role in solving the Bosnian War. Domestically Kohl's policies from 1990 focused on integrating former East Germany into reunified Germany, and he moved the federal capital from the provisional capital Bonn back to Berlin, although he himself never resided there because the government offices were only relocated in 1999. Kohl also greatly increased federal spending on arts and culture. After his chancellorship, Kohl became honorary chairman of the CDU in 1998 but resigned from the position in 2000, in the wake of the CDU donations scandal which damaged his reputation domestically. Cole received the 1988 Charlemagne Prize and was named Honorary Citizen of Europe, by the European Heads of State or Government in 1998. Following his death, Cole was honoured with the first ever European Act of State in Strasbourg. Cole was described as the greatest European leader of the second half of the 20th century by US Presidents George H. W. Bush and Bill Clinton. Chapter 1 – Life Chapter 2 Section 1, Youth and Education Helmut Kohl was born on 3 April 1930 in Ludwigshafen am Rhein. He was the third child of Hans Kohl, a Bavarian army veteran and civil servant, and his wife, Cecilia. Kohl's family was conservative and Roman Catholic, and remained loyal to the Catholic Center Party before and after 1933. His elder brother died in World War II as a teenage soldier. At the age of 10, Kohl was obliged, like most children in Germany at the time, to join the Deutsches Jungvolk, a section of the Hitler Youth. Aged 15, on 20 April 1945, Kohl was sworn into the Hitler Youth by leader Arthur Axmann at Berchtesgaden, just days before the end of the war, as membership was mandatory for all boys of his age. Kohl was also drafted for military service in 1945, he was not involved in any combat, a fact he later referred to as the mercy of late birth. Kohl attended the Ruprecht Elementary School, and continued at the Max Planck Gymnasium. 
After graduating in 1950, Cole began to study law in Frankfurt am Main, spending two semesters commuting between Ludwigshafen and Frankfurt. Here, Cole heard lectures from Carlo Schmidt and Walter Halstein, among others. In 1951, Cole switched to Heidelberg University, where he studied history and political science. Cole was the first in his family to attend university. Chapter 2 Section 2, Life Before Politics After graduating in 1956, Cole became a fellow at the Alfred Weber Institute of Heidelberg University under Dolf Sternberger where he was an active member of the Student Society ASEC. In 1958, Cole received his doctorate degree in history for his dissertation Die Politische Entwicklung in der Faults und das Widerrest in der Party in Natch 1945, under the supervision of the historian Walther Peter Fuchs. After that, Cole entered business, first as an assistant to the director of a foundry in Ludwigshafen, then, in April 1960, as a manager for the Industrial Union for Chemistry in Ludwigshafen. Chapter 2 Section 3 early political career. In 1946, Cole joined the recently founded CDU, becoming a full member once he turned 18 in 1948. In 1947, Cole was one of the co-founders of the Younger Union branch in Ludwigshafen, the CDU youth organization. In 1953, Cole joined the board of the Palatinate branch of the CDU. In 1954, Cole became vice chair of the Yanni Union in Rhineland Palatinate, being a member of the board until 1961. In January 1955, Cole ran for a seat on the board of the Rhineland Palatinate CDU, losing just narrowly to the state's Minister of Family Affairs, Franz Joseph Wurmeling. Cole was still able to take up a seat on the board, being sent there by his local party branch as a delegate. During his early years in the party, Cole aimed to open it towards the young generation, turning away from a close relationship with the churches. In early 1959, Cole was elected chairman of the Ludwigshafen district branch of the CDU, as well as candidate for the upcoming state elections. On 19 April 1959, Cole was elected as the youngest member of the state diet, the Landtag of Rhineland-Palatinate. In 1960, he was also elected to the Municipal Council of Ludwigshafen where he served as leader of the CDU party until 1969. When the chairman of the CDU parliamentary group in the Landtag, Wilhelm Boden, died in late 1961, Cole moved up into a deputy position. Following the next state election in 1963, he took over as chairman, a position he held until he became minister-president in 1969. In 1966, Cole and the incumbent minister-president and state party chairman, Peter Altmeier, agreed to share duties. In March 1966, Cole was elected as chairman of the party in Rhineland-Palatinate, while Altmeier once again ran for minister-president in the state elections in 1967, agreeing to hand the post over to Cole after two years, halfway into the legislative period. Chapter 2 Section 4, Minister-President of Rhineland-Palatinate Cole was elected Minister-President of Rhineland-Palatinate on 19 May 1969, as the successor to Peter Altmeier. As of 2017, he was the youngest person ever to be elected as head of government in a German Bundesland. Just a few days after his election as Minister-President, Cole also became Vice-Chair of the Federal CDU Party. While in office, Cole acted as a reformer, focusing on school and education. His government abolished school corporal punishment and the parochial school, topics that had been controversial with the conservative wing of his party. During his term, Cole founded the University of Trier Kaiserslautern. He also finalized a territorial reform of the state, standardizing codes of law and realigning districts, an act that he had already pursued under Altmeier's tenure, taking the chairmanship of the Landtags Committee on the Reform. After taking office, Cole established two new ministries, one for economy and transportation and one for social matters, with the latter going to Heiner Geisler, who would work closely with Cole for the next 20 years. Chapter 2 Section 5, Federal Party Level, 
election as chairman of the CDU Cole moved up into the federal board of the CDU in 1964. Two years later, shortly before his election as chairman of the party in Rhineland Palatinate, he failed at an attempt to be voted into the executive committee of the party. After the CDU lost its involvement in the federal government for the first time since the end of World War II in the 1969 election, Cole was elected into the committee. While former Chancellor Kurt Georg Kiesinger remained chairman of the CDU until 1971, it was now parliamentary chairman Rainer Bartzel who led the opposition against the newly formed Social Liberal Coalition of Willy Brandt. As a member of the board and the executive committee, Cole pushed towards a party reform, supporting liberal stances in education and social policies, including employee participation. When a proposal by the board was put to vote at a party convention in early 1971 in Dusseldorf, Cole was unable to prevail against protest coming from the conservative wing of the party around Alfred Dreger and the sister party CSU, costing him support at the liberal wing of the party. To make matters worse, in a mistake during the voting process, Cole himself voted against the proposal, further angering his supporters, such as party treasurer Walther Laszler Kiep. Nevertheless, when Kiesinger stepped down as party chairman in 1971, Cole was a candidate for his succession. He was unsuccessful, losing the vote to Bartzel 344 to 174. In April 1972, in the light of Brandt's Ostpolitik, the CDU aimed to depose Brandt and his government in a constructive vote of no confidence, replacing him with Bartzel. The attempt failed, as two members of the opposition voted against Bartzel. After Bartzel also lost the general election later that year, the path was free for Cole to take over. After Bartzel announced on 10 May 1973 that he would not run for the post of party chairman again, Cole succeeded him at a party convention in Bonn on 12 June 1973, amassing 520 of 600 votes, with him as the only candidate. Facing stiff opposition from the left wing of the party, Cole initially expected only to serve as chairman for a couple of months, as his critics planned to replace him at another convention set for November in Hamburg. Cole received the support of his party and remained in office, not least due to the lauded work of Kurt Biedenkorp, whom Cole had brought in as secretary general of the CEU. Cole remained chairman until 1998. When Chancellor Brandt stepped down in May 1974 following the unraveling of the Guillaume affair, Cole urged his party to restrain from Schadenfreude and not to use the position of their political opponent for cheap polemics. In June, Cole campaigned during the state elections in Lower Saxony for his party colleague Wilfred Hasselmann, leading the CDU to a strong result of 48.8% of the vote even though it proved not enough to prevent a continuation of the social liberal coalition in the state. Chapter 2 Section 6, First Candidacy for the Chancellorship and the 1976 Bundestag Election On 9 March 1975, Kohl and the CDU faced re-election in Rhineland-Palatinate. What placed Kohl, who intended to run for chancellor, under increased pressure was the fact that the sister parties of CDU and CSU were set to decide upon their leading candidate for the upcoming federal elections in mid-1975. CSU Chairman Franz Josef Strauss had ambitions to run and publicly put Cole under pressure over what a result would be acceptable in the state elections. On election day, the CDU achieved a result of 53.9%, the highest ever result in the state, consolidating Cole's position. Strauss' bid for the chancellorship was further put into jeopardy when in March 1975 the magazine Der Spiegel published a transcript of a speech held in November 1974, in which Strauss claimed that the Red Army faction, a West German armed struggle group responsible for multiple attacks at the time, had sympathizers in the ranks of the SPD and FDP. The scandal deeply unsettled the public and effectively ruled out Strauss for the candidacy. On 12 May 1975, the federal board of the CDU unanimously nominated Kohl as the candidate for the general elections, without consulting their Bavarian sister party beforehand. In reaction, the CSU nominated Strauss, and only a mediation by former Chancellor Kiesinger was able to resolve the issue and confirm Kohl as the candidate for both parties. 
In June 1975, Cole was also re-elected as party chairman, achieving a result of 98.44%. Strauss took the discord as a starting point to evaluate chances of expanding the CSU on the federal level, such as having separate electoral lists in the states of North Rhine-Westphalia, Lower Saxony, Hamburg, and Bremen. He hoped to draw away right-wing voters from the FDP towards the CSU and went as far as having private meetings with industrialists in North Rhine-Westphalia. These attempts led to discomfort within the membership base of the CDU and hampered both parties' chances in the upcoming elections. Cole himself remained silent during these tensions, which some interpreted as a lack of leadership, while others such as future President Karl Carstens praised him for seeking a consensus at the center of the party. In the 1976 federal election, the CDU-CSU coalition performed very well, winning 48.6% of the vote. They were kept out of government by the center-left cabinet formed by the Social Democratic Party of Germany and Free Democratic Party, led by Social Democrat Helmut Schmidt. Kohl then retired as Minister-President of Rhineland-Palatinate to become the leader of the CDU-CSU in the Bundestag. He was succeeded by Bernhard Vogel. Chapter 2 Section 7 – Leader of the Opposition In the 1980 federal elections, Kohl had to play second fiddle, when CSU leader Franz Josef Strauss became the CDU-CSU's candidate for Chancellor. Strauss was also unable to defeat the coalition of the Social Democratic Party of Germany, and the Free Democratic Party. Unlike, Kohl, Strauss did not want to continue as the leader of the CDU-CSU and remained Minister-President of Bavaria. Kohl remained as leader of the opposition, under the Third Schmidt cabinet. On 17 September 1982, a conflict of economic policy occurred between the governing SPD-FDP coalition partners. The FDP wanted to radically liberalize the labor market, while the SPD preferred greater job security. The FDP began talks with the CDU-CSU to form a new government. Chapter 2 – Chancellor of West Germany Chapter 3 – Section 1 – Rise to Power on 1 October 1982, the CEU proposed a constructive vote of no confidence which was supported by the FDP. The motion carried. Three days later, the Bundestag voted in a new CDU-CSU-FDP coalition cabinet, with Kohl as Chancellor. Many of the important details of the new coalition had been hammered out on 20 September, though minor details were reportedly still being hammered out as the vote took place. Though Cole's election was done according to the basic law, it came amid some controversy. The FDP had fought its 1980 campaign on the side of the SPD and even placed Chancellor Schmidt on some of their campaign posters. There were also doubts that the new government had the support of a majority of the people. In answer, the new government aimed at new elections at the earliest possible date. Polls suggested that a clear majority was indeed in reach. As the basic law only allows the dissolution of Parliament after an unsuccessful confidence motion, Cole had to take another controversial move, he called for a confidence vote only a month after being sworn in, which he intentionally lost because the members of his coalition abstained. President Karl Carstens then dissolved the Bundestag at Cole's request and called new elections. The move was controversial, as the coalition parties denied their votes to the same man they had elected Chancellor a month before and whom they wanted to re-elect after the parliamentary election. However, this step was condoned by the German Federal Constitutional Court as a legal instrument, and was again applied by SPD Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder in 2005. Chapter 3 Section 2 Second Cabinet in the federal elections of March 1983, Cole won a resounding victory. The CDU-CSU won 48.8%, while the FDP won 7.0%. Some opposition members of the Bundestag asked the Federal Constitutional Court to declare the whole proceeding unconstitutional. It denied their claim, but did set restrictions on a similar move in the future. The second Kohl cabinet pushed through several controversial plans, 
including the stationing of NATO mid-range missiles, against major opposition from the peace movement. On the 22nd of September 1984, Cole met the French President François Mitterrand at Verdun, where the Battle of Verdun between France and Germany had taken place during World War I. Together, they commemorated the deaths of both world wars. The photograph, which depicted them in its long handshake became an important symbol of French-German reconciliation. Cole and Mitterrand developed a close political relationship, forming an important motor for European integration. Together they laid the foundations for European projects, like Eurocorps and ARTA. In 1985, alongside European leaders from 16 other countries, they founded Eureka, a research and development network of national funding ministries and agencies that fund and support collaborative international projects. This French-German cooperation also was vital for important European projects, like the Treaty of Maastricht and the Euro. In 1985, Cole and US President Ronald Reagan, as part of a plan to observe the 40th anniversary of VE Day, saw an opportunity to demonstrate the strength of the friendship that existed between Germany and its former foe. During a November 1984 visit to the White House, Cole appealed to Reagan to join him in symbolizing the reconciliation of their two countries at a German military cemetery. As Reagan visited Germany as part of the 11th G7 summit in Bonn, the pair visited Bergen-Belsen concentration camp on 5 May and, controversially, the German military cemetery at Bitburg. Chapter 3 Section 3 – Domestic Policies Kohl's chancellorship presided over a number of innovative policy measures. Extensions in unemployment benefit for older claimants were introduced, while the benefit for the young unemployed was extended to age 21. In 1986, a child-rearing allowance was introduced to benefit parents when at least one was employed. Informal carers were offered an attendance allowance together with tax incentives, both of which were established with the tax reforms of 1990, and were also guaranteed up to 25 hours a month of professional support, which was supplemented by four weeks of annual holiday relief. In 1984, an early retirement scheme was introduced that offered incentives to employers to replace elderly workers with applicants off the unemployment register. In 1989 a partial retirement plan was introduced under which elderly employees could work half-time and receive 70% of their former salary and be credited with 90% of the full social insurance entitlement. In 1984, a mother and child fund was established, providing discretionary grants to forestall abortions on grounds of material hardship, and in 1986 a 10 BNDM package of Erzihungsgeld was introduced, although according to various studies, this latter initiative, was heavily counterbalanced by cuts. In 1989, special provisions were introduced for the older unemployed. Cole's time as Chancellor also saw some controversial decisions in the field of social policy. Student aid was made reimbursable to the state while the Health Care Reform Act of 1989 introduced the concept by which patients pay up front and are reimbursed, while increasing patient co-payments for hospitalization, spa visits, dental prostheses, and prescription drugs. In addition, while a 1986 baby year pensions reform granted women born after 1921 one year of work credit per child, Lawmakers were forced by public protest to phase in supplementary pension benefits for mothers who were born before the cut-off year. Chapter 3 Section 4 – Third Cabinet After the 1987 federal elections Cole won a slightly reduced majority and formed his third cabinet. The SPD's candidate for Chancellor was the Minister-President of North Rhine-Westphalia, Johannes Rau. In 1987, Cole hosted East German leader Erich Honecker, the first ever visit by an East German head of state to West Germany. This is generally seen as a sign that Kohl pursued Ostpolitik, a policy of détente between East and West that had been begun by the SPD-led governments during the 1970s. Chapter 3 Section 5 – Internal Struggle for CDU Leadership The CDU's General Secretary, Heiner Geisler, considered the party to be in a downward spiral following the relatively poor showing in the 1987 elections. Behind the scenes, he attempted to find a majority to unseat Kohl as the party's chairman, 
and replace him with Lothar Spath, the minister-president of Baden-Württemberg. Before the CDU party convention in Bremen started on the 11th of September 1989, Cole was diagnosed with an inflammation of his prostate. His doctor recommended immediate surgery, but Cole refused to miss the convention and attended while wearing a catheter and with his doctor by his side, who he introduced as his new speechwriter. In the end, the coup was unsuccessful, as Cole was re-elected as chairman with 79.52% of the votes. Spath, who did not stand for the position of chairman after support for Cole became apparent, was punished by his party, failing to be elected as vice-chairman with just 357 of 731 votes. Geisler meanwhile was relieved of his duties as general secretary and replaced by Volker Ruhr. Chapter 3 Section 6 – Road to Reunification Following the breach of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the East German Communist regime in 1989, Kohl's handling of the East German issue would become the turning point of his chancellorship. Kohl, like most West Germans, was initially caught unawares when the Socialist Unity Party was toppled in late 1989. Well aware of his constitutional mandate to seek German unity, he immediately moved to make it a reality. Taking advantage of the historic political changes occurring in East Germany, Kohl presented a ten-point plan for overcoming of the division of Germany and Europe without consulting his coalition partner, the FDP, or the Western Allies. In February 1990, he visited the Soviet Union seeking a guarantee from Mikhail Gorbachev that the USSR would allow German reunification to proceed. One month later, the Party of Democratic Socialism, the renamed said, was roundly defeated by a grand coalition headed by the East German counterpart of Kohl's CDU, which ran on a platform of speedy reunification. On 18 May 1990, Kohl signed an economic and social union treaty with East Germany. This treaty stipulated that when reunification took place, it would be under the quicker provisions of Article 23 of the Basic Law. That article stated that any new states could adhere to the Basic Law by a simple majority vote. The alternative would have been the more protracted route of drafting a completely new constitution for the newly reunified country, as provided by Article 146 of the Basic Law. However, the Article 146 process would have opened up contentious issues in West Germany. Even without this to consider, by this time East Germany was in a state of utter collapse. In contrast, an Article 23 reunification could be completed in as little as six months. Over the objections of Bundesbank President Karl Otto Pohl, he allowed a one-to-one -one exchange rate for wages, interest and rent between the West and East marks. In the end, this policy would seriously hurt companies in the new federal states. Together with Foreign Minister Hans Dietrich Genscher, Kohl was able to resolve talks with the former allies of World War II to allow German reunification. He received assurances from Gorbachev that a reunified Germany would be able to choose which international alliance it wanted to join, although Kohl made no secret that he wanted the reunified Germany to inherit West Germany's seats at NATO and the EC. A reunification treaty was signed on 31 August 1990, and was overwhelmingly approved by both parliaments on 20 September 1990. At midnight Central European time on 3 October 1990, East Germany officially ceased to exist, and its territory joined the Federal Republic as the five states of Brandenburg, Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, Saxony, Saxony-Anhalt and Thuringia. These states had been the original five states of East Germany before being abolished in 1952, and had been reconstituted in August. East and West Berlin were reunited as a city-state which became the capital of the enlarged Federal Republic. After the fall of the Berlin Wall, Kohl affirmed that former German territories east of the Odenisa Line were definitively part of Poland, thereby relinquishing any claim Germany had to them in a treaty signed on 14 November 1990 in Warsaw. Though, earlier in March of that year, Kohl caused a diplomatic firestorm when he suggested that a reunified Germany would not accept the Odenisa Line, and implied that the Federal Republic might wish to restore the frontier of 1937, by force if necessary. 
after the statement caused a major international backlash that threatened to halt German reunification, Kohl retracted his comments after knuckling under international rebuke, and assured both the United States and the Soviet Union that a reunified Germany would accept the Odenisa line as the final border between Poland and Germany. In 1993, Kohl confirmed, via treaty with the Czech Republic, that Germany would no longer bring forward territorial claims as to the pre-1945 ethnic Germans of Detinant. This treaty was a disappointment for the German Heimatwehr Triabene. Chapter 3, Chancellor of Reunified Germany Reunification placed Kohl in a momentarily unassailable position. In the 1990 elections, the first free, fair and democratic all-German elections since the Weimar Republic era, Kohl won by a landslide over opposition candidate and minister-president of Saarland, Oscar Lafontaine. He then formed his fourth cabinet dot after the federal elections of 1994 Kohl was re-elected with a somewhat reduced majority, defeating minister-president of Rhineland Palatinate Rudolf Scharping. The SPD was able to win a majority in the Bundesrat, which significantly limited Kohl's power. In foreign politics, Kohl was more successful, for instance getting Frankfurt and Main as the seat for the European Central Bank. In 1997, Kohl received the Vision for Europe Award for his efforts in the unification of Europe. By the late 1990s, Kohl's popularity had dropped amid rising unemployment. He was defeated by a large margin in the 1998 federal elections by the Minister President of Lower Saxony, Gerhard Schroeder. The later Chancellor Angela Merkel started her political career as Kohl's protege, and was known in the 1990s as Kohl's Girl. In January 1991, he lifted the then little known Merkel to national prominence by appointing her to the federal cabinet. Chapter 4 Retirement a red-green coalition government led by Schroeder replaced Kohl's government on 27 October 1998. He immediately resigned as CDU leader and largely retired from politics. He remained a member of the Bundestag until he decided not to run for re-election in the 2002 election. Chapter 5 Section 1 – CDU Finance Affair Kohl's life after political office in the beginning was dominated by the CDU donations scandal. The party financing scandal became public in 1999, when it was discovered that the CDU had received and kept illegal donations during Kohl's leadership. Der Spiegel reported, it was never suggested that Kohl benefited personally from political donations, but he did lead the party financial system outside of the legal boundaries, doing such things as opening secret bank accounts and establishing civic associations that could act as middlemen, or procurement agencies, for campaign donations. While his reputation in Germany suffered in the immediate years after the finance affair, it did not affect his reputation internationally, outside of Germany he was perceived as a great European statesman and remembered for his role in solving the five great problems of his era, the German reunification, European integration, the relations with Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union, and the Bosnian War. Chapter 5 Section 2 – Life After Politics In 2002, Kohl left the Bundestag and officially retired from politics. Later, he was largely rehabilitated by his party. After taking office, Angela Merkel invited her former patron to the Chancellor's office and Ronald Pofalla, the Secretary-General of the CDU, announced that the CDU would cooperate more closely with Kohl, to take advantage of the experience of this great statesman. On 4 March 2004, he published the first of his memoirs, called Memories 1930-1982, covering the period from 1930-1982, when he became Chancellor. The second part, published on 3 November 2005, included the first half of his Chancellorship. On 28 December 2004, he was airlifted by the Sri Lankan Air Force, after having been stranded in a hotel by the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake. Cole was a member of the Club of Madrid. Dot, as reported in the German press, he also gave his name to the Helmut Kohl Center for European Studies, which is the new political foundation of the European People's Party. 
In late February 2008, Cole suffered a stroke in combination with a fall which caused serious head injuries and required his hospitalization, after which he was reported as bound to a wheelchair due to partial paralysis and with difficulty speaking. He remained in intensive care since, marrying his 43-year-old partner, Micah Richter, on 8 May 2008, while still in hospital. In 2010, he had a gallbladder operation in Heidelberg, and heart surgery in 2012. He was reportedly in critical condition in June 2015, following intestinal surgery following a hip replacement procedure. In 2011, Cole, despite frail health, began giving a number of interviews and issued statements in which he sharply condemned his successor Angela Merkel, whom he had formerly mentored, on her policies in favor of strict austerity in the European debt crisis and later also towards Russia, in the Ukrainian crisis, which he saw as opposed to his politics of peaceful bilateral European integration during his time as Chancellor. He published the book Aus Sorg um Europa outlining these criticisms of Merkel and was widely quoted in the press as saying, Die macht mir mein Europa kaputt. Kohl thus joined former German chancellors Gerhard Schroeder and Helmut Schmidt in their similar criticisms of Merkel's policies in these two fields. On 19 April 2016, Kohl was visited in his Augustheim residence by Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. The two had a one hour conversation and released a joint press statement regarding the European migrant crisis, saying that both doubted that Europe was capable of continuing to absorb refugees indefinitely. Before the meeting, it had widely been interpreted as criticism of Angela Merkel's handling of the crisis, but eventually, Kohl and Orban refrained from attacking the Chancellor directly, writing, It is about a good future for Europe and peace in the world. The efforts of point in the same direction. In 2016, Kohl sued Random House, his former ghostwriter Heribert Schwan and Cawther Tillman Jens for publishing without his consent 116 comments allegedly made by Cole during interviews in 2001 and 2002 and published in an unauthorized biography in 2014 called Legacy, The Cole Protocols. By April 2017, a German court ordered publisher Random House and the two journalists to pay Cole damages of 1 million euros for violating his privacy, making it the highest judgment ever rendered for violations of privacy rights under German law. Chapter 5, Political Views Cole was committed to European integration, maintaining close relations with the French President François Mitterrand. Parallel to this, he was committed to German reunification. Although he continued the Ostpolitik of his social democratic predecessors, Kohl supported Reagan's more aggressive policies in order to weaken the Soviet Union. He had a strained relationship with British Prime Minister and fellow Conservative Margaret Thatcher, although Kohl did allow her secret access to his plans on reunification in March 1990, in order to allay the concerns she shared with Mitterrand. Chapter 6 Personality and Media Portrayals Kohl faced stiff opposition from the West German political left and was mocked for his physical stature, alleged provinciality, simplistic language, and local dialect. Similar to historical French cartoons of Louis-Philippe of France, Hans Straxler depicted Kohl as a pair in the left-leaning satirical journal Titanic. The German word Bern became a widespread nickname for and symbol of the Chancellor. Comedians like Thomas Freitag and Stefan Wald imitated the Chancellor, and books were sold with jokes rewritten with Kohl as the stupid protagonist. When Kohl died, left wing newspaper Taz presented a title page, showing a flower set typical for funerals, with a pear and the caption Flourishing Landscapes, Kohl's euphemism for East Germany after reunification. Following protests the editor-in-chief apologized, dot the minister-president of Rhineland Palatinate was a young reformer in a somewhat backward state, and a newcomer who heavily criticized the older party leaders. The national media, for as much as they took notice of him, regarded him with curiosity. But this changed when Cole became chair of the federal party in 1973, and even more dramatically when in late 1975 his party made him candidate for the chancellery. His opponents within the Federal Party, but also journalists and other observers, 
had their doubts whether the parochial but successful modernizer of a manageable small estate was the right person to lead the Federal Republic, a huge and complicated industrial country. Biographer Hans Peter Schwarz names five problems of the 46 year old candidate, being unfamiliar with the complicated relations in the Bundestag faction, having no international experience, having no profound knowledge of economics, but also, a lack of charisma and no cultural acceptance in northern Germany. In small circles, Kohl was fascinating and a perfect host, the larger the crowd, the vaguer, weaker, and paler he appeared. His gaze into TV cameras made him look helpless. When attacked, for example in election campaigns, he became a good fighter. But in general he was no great orator, his speeches were lengthy and verbose. Additionally, the Catholic with his Palatinate dialect, a folksy man who had culture but was simply no intellectual, to North German journalists he just felt foreign, more than any previous CDU chairman. Kohl was a true people's person and loved to be in company of groups. His tremendous memory about people and their lives helped him to build up his networks in the Christian Democratic Union, in government and abroad. In a study of German chancellorship as political leadership, Henrik Gast gives examples how much time Kohl invested into personal relationships even with the backbenchers in the Bundestag and also party officials up to the local level. This worked, because it fitted Kohl's character and was authentic. Kohl knew that all these people were the basis of his political power and that he needed their loyalty and personal affection. He could also be rude to subordinates and assistants, and confront political adversaries. He was capable of both, being empathetic and being extremely confrontational. If you did not do what he wanted, empathy was over, as Gast quotes a federal minister of Kohl's own party. There was also a difference between the younger Kohl and the Chancellor in his later years, a parliamentary state secretary called, a sense of tact and politeness. The early and the later Kohl, that was a tremendous difference. In the early years he had all of that, in the later years no more. Chapter 7, Personal Life Chapter 8 Section 1 Family of Helmut Kohl. On the 27th of June 1960, Kohl married Hannelore Renner, after he had already asked for her hand in marriage in 1953, delaying the ceremony until he was financially stable. Both had known each other since 1948, when they met in a dancing class. They had two sons, Walter Kohl and Peter Kohl. Hannelore Kohl had studied languages and spoke fluent French and English, during her husband's political career, she was an important advisor to him, especially on world affairs. She was a steadfast advocate of German reunification even before it seemed feasible, and of NATO and Germany's alliance with the United States. Both sons were educated in the United States, at Harvard University and MIT, respectively. Walter Cole worked as a financial analyst with Morgan Stanley in New York City and later founded a consulting firm with his father in 1999. Peter Cole worked as an investment banker in London for many years. Walter Cole was formally married to the business administration academic Christine Folkman and they have a son, Johannes Folkman, he is now married to the Korean-born Kyung Suk Cole Nae Hwang. Peter Cole is married to the Turkish-born investment banker Alif Susan Cole, the daughter of a wealthy Turkish industrialist, and they have a daughter, Leila Cole. On 5 July 2001, his wife, Hannelore, committed suicide, she had suffered from photodermatitis for many years. Chapter 8 Section 2 – Controversial Second Marriage while in hospital in 2008 after suffering serious head trauma, Cole, then aged 78, married Micah Richter, a former chancellery employee who was 44 years old, they had no children. For the entire duration of this marriage, Cole had a brain injury, was barely able to speak, and was wheelchair-bound. According to Helmut Cole's son Peter Cole, Helmut Cole did not intend to marry Richter and had stated this clearly, then came the accident and a loss of control, Peter Cole said, suggesting that Richter had pressured his then seriously ill father into marrying her. Richter has been severely criticized in Germany, by Cole's children, former friends and by German media. 
Following his new marriage, Cole became estranged from his two sons and his grandchildren, and his sons said their father was kept like a prisoner by his new wife. His children and grandchildren were also prevented from seeing him by his new wife for the last six years of his life. In his biography of his mother, Peter Cole wrote about the only time he had visited Richter's apartment, which he described as a kind of private Helmut Kohl museum full of Helmut Kohl photographs and artifacts everywhere, the whole thing looked like the result of a staggering, meticulous collecting for the purpose of hero worship, as we know it from reports on stalkers, Kohl wrote. Jochen Arts criticized Micah Richter in the Zutbeutsche Zeitung in 2012 for building a wall around Helmut Kohl and controlling him. As a result he had also become estranged from many former friends disliked by his new wife. Cole biographer Heribert Schwann describes Richter as more than conservative, rather German nationalist, and said she insists on the right to interpretational sovereignty in relation to Cole's life, and that she has insisted on many proven falsehoods. It caused a scandal when Richter denied Cole's sons and grandchildren entry to Helmut Cole's house, the son's childhood home, after Cole's death. Richter was also criticized for attempting to take full control of Cole's funeral, and for trying to prevent Chancellor Merkel from speaking at the ceremony in Strasbourg. Richter wanted the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who has fiercely criticized Merkel's refugee policies, to speak instead, she only relented when told it would cause a scandal. Chapter 8 Honors and Awards Helmut Kohl received numerous awards and accolades, as well as honorary titles such as doctorates and citizenships. Among others, he was joint recipient of the Charlemagne Prize with French President François Mitterrand for their contribution to Franco-German friendship and European Union. In 1996, Kohl received the Prince of Asturias Award in International Cooperation from Felipe of Spain. In 1998, Cole was named Honorary Citizen of Europe, by the European Heads of State or Government for his extraordinary work for European integration and cooperation, an honor previously only bestowed on Jean Monnet. After leaving office in 1998, Cole became the second person after Konrad Adenauer to receive the Grand Cross in special design of the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany. He received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Bill Clinton in 1999. Chapter 9, Death, European Act of State and Funeral Cole died at 9.15 a.m. on Friday 16 June 2017 in the Augersheim district of Ludwigshafen, his hometown, aged 87 of natural causes. Cole was honored with an unprecedented European Act of State on 1 July in Strasbourg, France. A Catholic Requiem Mass was subsequently celebrated in Speyer Cathedral. Cole was interred in the Cathedral Chapter Cemetery in Speyer, directly adjacent to the Konrad Adenauer Park and a few hundred meters to the northwest of the cathedral. It was reported that Cole had himself chosen the burial location in the late summer of 2015 when his health began to deteriorate. No member of the Cole family, Cole's children and grandchildren, participated in any of the ceremonies, owing to a feud with Cole's controversial second wife Micah Cole Richter, who had among other things barred them from paying their respects to him at his house, ignored their wish for a ceremony in Berlin and their wish that Cole should be interred alongside his parents and his wife of four decades Hanelore Cole in the family tomb. Chapter 10 Section 1 Tributes Chancellor Angela Merkel, speaking from the German embassy in Rome, said that this man who was great in every sense of the word, his achievement, his role as a statesman in Germany at its historical moment, it's going to take a while until we can truly assess what we have lost in his passing. She lauded Cole's supreme art of statesmanship in the service of people and peace and noted that Cole had also changed her own life decisively. Pope Francis lauded Cole as a great statesman and committed European, worked with farsightedness and devotion for the good of the people in Germany, and in neighboring European countries. The 14th Dalai Lama praised Cole as a visionary leader and statesman, and said he had great admiration for Chancellor Cole's steady leadership, when the Cold War came to a peaceful end and the reunification of Germany became possible. Flags were flown at half-staff at the European Commission headquarters in Brussels. Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker lauded Cole as a great European. 
He called Cole my mentor, my friend, the very essence of Europe. The President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, called Cole a friend and a statesman, who helped to reunify Europe. Former U.S. President George H. W. Bush lauded Cole as a true friend of freedom and one of the greatest leaders in post-war Europe. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton said he was deeply saddened by the death of my dear friend whose visionary leadership prepared Germany and all of Europe for the 21st century. U.S. President Donald Trump said Cole was a friend and ally to the United States and that he was not only the father of German reunification, but also an advocate for Europe and the transatlantic relationship. The world has benefited from his vision, and efforts. His legacy will live on. Former U.S. Secretary of State James Baker said Cole's death means Germany has lost one of its greatest leaders, the United States has lost one of its best friends and the world, has lost a ringing voice for freedom, and that Cole more than anyone at the end of the Cold War, was the architect of the reunification of Germany which had brought freedom to millions and has helped make Europe safer and more prosperous. French President Emmanuel Macron called Kohl a great European, and an architect of united Germany and Franco-German friendship. Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel called Kohl a true European who will be greatly missed. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte said Kohl was a great statesman who had shaped European history. Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy lauded Kohl's role in European history and in the German reunification. Polish Prime Minister Beta Szydło called Kohl an outstanding figure and statesman, a great politician in exceptional times. Italian President Sergio Mattia called Kohl one of Europe's founding fathers, and said that he who was, rightly, described as the Chancellor of Reunification, worked with farsightedness and determination, in years marked by deep and epochal changes in world equilibria, to give back unity to his country in the framework of the great project of European integration. As an authentic statesman, he knew how to combine pragmatism and a capacity of vision, furnishing a courageous contribution not only to the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the reunification of Germany, but also to overcoming the dramatic divisions which, for decades, had torn Europe. Former Italian Prime Minister and President of the European Commission Romano Prodi called Kohl a giant of a united Europe. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban called Kohl the great old man of European politics and Hungary's friend. Former British Prime Minister John Major said Kohl was a towering figure in German and European history, who entrenched Germany in a wider Europe, in the hope of achieving a unity and peace that the continent had never known before. This required great political strength and courage, both of which qualities Helmut had in abundance. British Prime Minister Theresa May called Kohl a giant of European history and said that I pay tribute to the role he played in helping to end the Cold War and reunify Germany. We have lost the father of modern Germany. Former Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev said that it was real luck that at that difficult time leading nations were headed by statesmen with a sense of responsibility, adamant about defending the interests of their countries but also able to consider the interests of others, able to overcome the barrier of prevailing suspicion about partnership and mutual trust. The name of this outstanding German politician will stay in the memory of his compatriots and all Europeans. Russian President Vladimir Putin said I was lucky to know Helmut Kohl in person. I profoundly admired his wisdom, and the ability to make well-considered, far-reaching decisions even in the most difficult situations. He called Kohl a highly reputed statesman, one of the patriarchs of European and world politics. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said Kohl was a true European, and the embodiment of a united Germany in a united Europe. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said Kohl had played an instrumental role in the peaceful reunification of his country, and that today's Europe is a product of his vision and his tenacity, in the face of enormous obstacles.